good evening. I'm Reza, uh, CTO and co-founder of TransferFi. We are developing long-range, safe, and efficient wireless power transfer technology based on radio frequency. So the idea that we have is to enable to access power, like uh, data that we are accessing through 3G, 4G, anywhere on demand. So we are developing this technology. So the core uh, technology that we are uh, developing now is more focused on the transmitter side rather than the receiver side, which our competitors, companies like Energis, OSHA, Powercast are working actively on it. So we showed through the demo that we have and lots of cool simulations and theoretical analysis that we can improve the efficiency by 100 times just by manipulating the waveform that we are transmitting at the transmitter using active beamforming. So the technology, the main focus is the active beamforming to make sure that we can focus the radio frequency to target receivers, to target people that uh, have the energy receiver. We have the new waveform which is designed to specifically carry energy rather than data. We have the new antenna design which is focused on capturing and uh, harvesting the most of the RF uh, power rather than just uh, taking note of the signal to noise ratio or these things, which is very important in communication. Besides the core technology that we are developing, we have the other features and modules that are enabling multi-user, multi-device charging. We have the smart scheduling mechanism, which taking care of the device's power uh, storage uh, limits. For example, if your IoT device is getting low power, we put in the higher uh, charging priority rather than the, the other devices. Everything is based on the feedback that we have it. Uh, then we have the combined data and uh, power transmission over the same band. We call it SWEEP, simultaneous information and uh, power transfer. We have the technology electronic dashboard, which is almost like a uh, fuse box that you have at home. So when something trip at home, you go and check which part you go and solve the issue. It's a digital version of that one. Every moment, every second, you, you know what is going on your wireless power network. You're monitoring all the devices, how much power they have. So how long they can go with the current state of charge, when they are going to be recharged again. So if I want to compare the transfer file with the bigger guys here, so we have the charging uh, multi-device charging up to 32 device currently. We have the new uh, waveform design, which is patented. Uh, we have the active beamforming. We are developing 32 element antenna for active beamforming. Currently, eight element uh, device is tested. If you see the competitors, the only one is the Energis, with more than $200 million investment. They are working and looking for eight elements. We already did the test. We verified how it works, efficiency proven. So we have the more than 10 milliwatt power delivery over 25 meters, which is more than enough for all the IoT devices nowadays. So if I want to uh, compare in terms of the quality of service in IoT, we consider ourselves to a provider of the energy to high-end devices, high-end sensors from the Rockwell, Siemens, and bigger guys, compared to the low quality, low sample rate devices, IoT devices and sensors, which are from the new developers, like a sweep sensor or IQNet. So they are focused on the new sensors, which they send data maybe 30 times per day, which is cool for the project in the, for example, making a smart houses or monitoring the temperature within this area but it's not useful in industry. In industry, some of the application requires 10 or 100 samples per second. Every millisecond, you need to know what is going on in your device. Otherwise, it can fail and cause a trouble. So in terms of the efficiency, maybe you wonder what's the efficiency. We showed through the simulation. If we have the, like a area of 20 meters by 20 meters room, if we deploy up to 800 sensors over the line of uh, ma fabric uh, manufacturing lines, like assembly lines or these things, we can achieve up to 35% efficiency in total, in end to end, in terms of the transmission. 
So in terms of the team, so I, grad, I got my PhD degree from NUS. I work uh, four years as a research, uh, as a, uh, research student uh, attached to I2R. Uh, the, uh, the other co-founder of the company, CEO uh, Ashish, uh, he's here also. He used to work with National Instrument for eight years. Okay, we are also actively looking for embedded system engineers. We are looking for RF uh, engineers. We are looking for antenna design guys. If you are interested to work with us in some of this project, let me know at the end of this event. We also have the advisory team. Uh, Dave is working for the how to run the startups, give the more general comments, how we need to set up the system, how to approach the investor, these things. We have the Chandran, he is more focused on the sale. Uh, and we have the Dr. Zhang Ray, which is technical advisor for us. He is the number one in terms of the citation in the field of wireless power transfer. More than 25,000 citations. Yeah. And published about 500 papers in total so far. So transfer is taking the revo next revolution for power delivery. So anybody interested, please just talk with us after this event. Thank you. Dr. Razor, you mentioned beam forming, yeah. but you also mentioned that there are multiple devices that can be accepted by this transmission up to 32. Up to 32. So the beam forming happens at a high rate to each and every device. So beam forming, the idea is if we take the omnidirectional antenna, it transmits the waves like a circular wave. goes everywhere. <coughs> we use 32 elements of antennas to direct the beam. Make it a small cone, which can be directed to different direction. How we implement the multi-device charging? We have the smart scheduler. We specific specifically give a time slot to each of the devices to be charged in one direction. For example, device number one, we charge it for two seconds. We move to the device number two, which is this side. We have all the list of the devices and how long and when they should be charged. So in, o in order to do that, you need some uh, Feedback. free knowledge of where these devices may be. OK, that one, uh, using the feedback, energy feedback. When we are transmitting the power initially, like a random direction, we get the feedback from all these sensors. Then we understand which sensor is which location. We store this information in the lookup table that we have. Then we use that one to redo the charge within the next time slots. So if necessary, we can just re-optimize uh, re the location. So the feedback is like radar kind of feedback, or is it they actually transmit? Real time. Real time, no, it's not a radar. It's active, okay, feedback. active feedback, yeah, okay, got it. in terms of the power level, sure. okay. RSSI right. in particular. Okay. Have you ever demonstrated with any uh, viable sensors of yeah. any sort? So the sensor that we are currently using, oh, it's here. This guy. Oh, nice. OK, this guy has the. Uh, three axis accelerometer from uh, SD electronics plus uh, environmental monitoring from the uh, Bosch. The sensor itself is not designed with us, it's from Ruvitac, which is a very famous company doing the sensor things. But what we did, we take out the battery out of the system. There is no battery. If you open the box, there is nothing, no storage. So there are two antennas and the rectifier circuit, which we optimize, plus our transmitter. When you enter the area that the transmitter is in the vicinity of the transmitter, you get charged and start the transmission immediately. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you.